Hello everyone, Top at Waffle here again to continue working on optimizing our CSGO competitive level. We're starting out by loading the CSGO SDK and then Hammer World Editor from there. We're picking up right where we left off last time. Last time we discussed how the visibility engine chops up our level into viz leaves and how those help draw the level at render time. We then also touched on how hint and skip can be used to manually optimize our level with viz leaves. We then went into my workflow on how I optimize a level. This started with finding objects that still need to be funk detailed in our level, setting unseen faces to no draw, and setting fade distances on props that can afford to be rendered in and out depending on our position from them. Today we're going to start with hint and skip. I touched on how this worked previously, and if you haven't seen that, I suggest you go back and watch it, as this is a very crucial, important part of how Source Engine renders your level. They are the basis of how all optimization entities function. The first hint brush that I want to create is a horizontal hint across the entire top of all of my buildings. As of right now, the visibility engine may think that if we're standing in middle, we should be able to see some of the stuff over in B due to how high the viz leaves stretch into the sky. We can use the horizontal hint brush across our entire level to help mitigate this. Since hint and skip brushes can just collide through your world, what I do is create a giant brush. And the only face that I'm concerned with is the top face. I want it so it's Z fighting or essentially colliding with the top of my buildings here. This is the perfect spot for this brush to be. I'll then browse for the hint texture and then right click to apply it. If you're only going to make one hint brush in your level, this is the one to make. After we've made a hint brush, we can hide it. We don't need to see it anymore. And if you have a ton of hint brushes in your level and you don't want to see them while you're working on it, you can go to the auto section of your viz groups and under tool brushes, uncheck hint and skip. This clears up your view so it's much easier to see what you're working with. Other things that you want to turn off when you're working with hint and skip is anything that doesn't affect visibility. We don't want to see these objects because they may confuse us on what hint and skip will affect. So let's turn off everything by unchecking auto, turning world geometry on, and then turn off tool brushes. This will leave us with just the world brushes in our level that are currently splitting visibility. Let's add a few more hint and skip brushes so we can understand how this works. I'll select skip. And the next brush that I want to create is down here. I want to split diagonally across this point here. So that way, players who are walking down this alley here won't see what's rendered in the metro until they actually get there. We'll start by just creating another skip brush. And again, it's okay for these to collide with other objects. We're then going to use the clipping tool. I'll lower my grid size, and I want this to be on this point here, which is this edge. And then I'll just drag this to meet up with this vertex here. This will make it so as long as I'm on this side of this hint brush, I won't see anything in the metro. What's happened is I didn't make my brush large enough. I want this to extend all the way to where my skybox is. I'll just delete that and remake it obscenely large and make the same cut with my clipping tool. I'll then put hint on it, and now I'll resize it so it dips into the bottom of the metro, and then I'll scale it up a little bit so it's Z fighting with the top of this. I want to create another horizontal hint brush here. I can do this easily by just selecting my existing one, holding shift, and then hitting my down arrow to nudge. I want to align this one with the tops of these roofs in the metro. So now any hint brushes that I create in the metro will butt up against this horizontal hint brush here. I can then turn off all of my hint and skip. Let's create another hint brush that runs parallel to this face here. What this will accomplish is as long as we're on the left side of this face, nothing on the other side of the wall will be rendered. I'll grab my skip texture, and then I'll run a long hint brush parallel to this face, and then I'll apply hint to it. You can only create so many hint and skips before you have to load the level up to see where you need to work on. Let's compile. Here we are in game. The two commands that we want to have on when we're working with hint and skip in game is mat 
Wireframe 1, and Matt, LeafViz 1. As of right now, the built-in optimization isn't terrible. Due to the hint brush that I've created here, we can't see any of the metro. As soon as I cross this line, it starts to be rendered because I can then see it. Also, as soon as I cross this line here, all of that will be hidden because it's no longer in my PVS. Now that I'm in the metro, we put that hint brush right along this face here. So now as soon as I cross this, the rest of the metro will begin being rendered. What I'll most likely end up doing is placing another hint brush diagonally across this face. And all I want to do now is just see what's being rendered that shouldn't be rendered. Right now, this is actually pretty good. There's not too much needlessly drawn objects. Another good thing to remember when you're optimizing is you don't have to do this 100% perfect. If the level remains at a stable, playable frame rate, you don't need to diddle it to death. Of course, you'll always be able to get better frame rate with more optimization, but once the level runs on a potato, you don't need to make it run on a turnip. It already runs on the potato. Let's create that diagonal hint brush that I was talking about, but again, let's only turn on what matters to hint and skip. I'll make this giant brush and then use my clipping tool to clip it diagonally across this face. And then apply hint to the face that I want to split the viz leaves on. You'll notice that this brush is a bit larger than it needs to be. The only face that we care about is the hint face, which means I can make this brush a little bit more attractive to work with in Hammer by clipping the back off of it. This doesn't affect anything since Skip is on those faces. Now when I'm on this side of the hint brush, everything that's on the other side of this wall will not be rendered. That's the last hint brush that I want to make down here in the Metro. Since when I was playtesting through it a minute ago, everything seemed to be rendering pretty well. There wasn't too much excess in any area that I noticed. You'll want to revisit your optimization as you work on the level to see if you can improve it in any areas. Just look for areas that have objects needlessly rendered. The next optimization entity that I want to look at is an area portal. Area portals serve two purposes, calling geometry and removing entire areas from rendering. Area portals can be thought of as a doorway. They separate our map into areas and each area portal must touch two. You'll notice that this area portal has one face touching one area and one face touching another area. This is how area portals must be set up. One face per one area and an area portal must only touch two areas. This area portal has separated our level into the area on the left with the player spawn and the area on the right with just the barrels. When we look through the area portal, it's going to sample every frame and determine what should and should not be rendered. This is not a super costly operation and it does help performance a considerable amount in highly dense areas. You do want to be careful that putting too many area portals in one section of your map can decrease performance instead of increase performance due to the amount of sampling that each area portal has to perform for visibility tests. Right now, I'm looking through an area portal. Everything seems fine, I can walk through it, but if you notice, as soon as these barrels would leave my view, they're no longer being rendered. We can visualize the area portals in our level by using our draw portals one. We now have this green box fit around our area portal brush. This green box is what our game is sampling every frame to see what should be drawn on the other side. As soon as we walk through it, the effects of the area portal are negated and we go back to hint and skip optimization. Now let's add area portals into our level. I'll add area portals over at B site and CT spawn. We first want to identify what areas of our level will need area portals. To seal off B site from the rest of the level to create the two areas that every area portal needs to touch, we'll need an area portal in the doorway to CT spawn, the doorway to middle, both doorways to T spawn, and an area portal to seal in the top of the bomb site. We can start by going over to CT spawn and creating a brush with the area portal texture. This brush should be fitted inside of other world brushes. Then press Ctrl T and change its class to a Funk Area Portal. Click Apply and that's all we have to do. We need to do the same thing to these other doorways. I can just copy and paste this and fit it into each other door.
Now we just need to create the area portal brush that will seal in the top of the bomb site. I'll create a larger brush and it needs to perfectly fit the ceiling. Although it is allowed to clip through this skybox brush in the back, let's tie it to a area portal and click apply. We now need to turn everything back on in our level and let's run it to see if it works. Here we are inside a game at B site. We'll notice that we have a large green box for the top area portal, an odd shaped box over on the right side for the CT door and the door to mid, and the same odd shaped box for the two T doors. When the engine detects two area portals are on the same plane, it will merge them together. This is for better performance and it's not a bad thing. You do want to make sure that it doesn't merge an area portal on one side of your map with an area portal that's really far away, creating a large sample space. As I start to walk into the site, we can see that props are starting to be rendered because the area portal has tested that visibility. Now that I'm inside the larger box around each area portal, which we can see moving when I move my mouse cursor around the ceiling one is now active. When looking through an area portal, all other area portals will become inactive since we don't need to sample through two area portals if we're already sampling through one. Area portals have two states, an open state and a closed state. By default, an area portal is open, which means it will sample and you can see through it. We can close our area portals to see what this looks like. We'll end up using this with doors later in CT spawn. If I use ENT underscore fire function area portal and then close, this will close all the area portals in our level. This is useful for when your area portal is applied to a door that opens and closes, everything that's behind the door will no longer be rendered when the door is shut. We can open those back up by using the open command. Let's add area portals to the CT spawn area and to mid. We can start out by adding an area portal to these doors here. I currently don't see the doors, so we can turn them on by checking the point entities box in my auto viz groups. I'm only concerned with these door models themselves, so I can hide the frame. I need to put an area portal inside of the doors. The doors are thick enough so we can place an area portal in between them. And once that's done, we press control T, set it to an area portal. And what I want to use here is name of linked door. I can use my eyedropper and I'll pick doors one. This will tie the area portal to the function door rotating. When the door is open, the area portal is open. When the door is closed, the area portal is closed. I'll set the initial state to closed since the doors are starting closed. Now to seal off into two areas, we need to close this doorway up. I'll use what's called an area portal window here so we can see how those function. Area portal windows work just like a regular area portal but they have a brush fade in and out on top of them. This is useful for larger, longer maps where you have some objects that you don't want to always be rendered until you're closer to them. We can start by creating the area portal like normal and then press control T and turn it to an area portal window. Now we need to create an entity on top that will fade in and out. I'll do a search for black. I'll use the CS Italy black and I want to create another brush on top of my area portal window. I'll tie this brush to a function brush entity and I'll just give it a name area portal window. Selecting the area portal window, I want to select the rendered window. Click the eyedropper and select my area portal window. We can set a start and end distance from which the transition will start and end. I'll leave this as default as you can play with the values to make it work in your situation. There's also the translucency limit, which determines how translucent our rendered window should be when we're right on top of it. I'll leave this at point two so we can also see how that functions. Let's compile and check it out in game. So here we are in game. As I walk closer to my area portal window, we can see that it starts to fade out and the area portal opens itself. This entity is very situational and I would usually use it in areas that don't involve gameplay as disable rendering in areas where people can be is not a great idea. We can see that it's slightly tinted black. This is due to that transparency limit that was default of 0.2. If you set this to zero, it would not be 
slightly transparent like that. You see, when I walk through it, everything brightens up a little bit because the black brush is no longer being drawn. If I walk over to B site, everything there is still working exactly as it should with this area portal into itself. And if I come over by where my opening doors are, by using wireframe, we see that nothing is rendered behind it but the 3D skybox. The 3D skybox is typically always rendered. When I open the door, the area behind it instantly pops into place. When I close the door, after a brief moment, the area portal closes. Even if we spam the door, the area portal will stay open and it's intelligent enough to not close when the door is open. If we blow the doors up, the area portal knows that it needs to open and render everything behind it. That's going to wrap up optimization. I hope you enjoyed seeing and learning and fiddling with how the Source Engine renders every level that you've ever played. Thanks for watching. We really appreciate you sticking it out. Don't forget to join us again tomorrow for the final one when we ship our level.